extremely simple, modern and fast VPN that utilizes state-of-the-art cryptography. This is how WireGuard VPN is described. If you are not yet familiar with this amazing tool, then this video is for you. I will show you how easy it is to install and configure WireGuard VPN on a Linux server. We'll explore setting up a VPN between a client and a server that allows the client to route all its traffic to the internet over the server's IP. You will ask, I can buy a commercial VPN and achieve the same thing. Right, but are you certain that the VPN provider is trustworthy and won't collect logs or leak any information? Second question is, why WireGuard? As there are well-proven alternatives like OpenVPN or Ike version 2. The answer is simple. WireGuard is much easier to configure and implement than OpenVPN and Ike 2 and has better performance. My name is Philip. Let's get started. I will show you how to install and configure the tool on Ubuntu, but WireGuard is available for all major Linux distributions, Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and also some router support it out of the box, like ARM version of Microtik. First thing we need to do is to set up a VM in the cloud that will act as our VPN server. In this demo, I'll be using GCP VM, but if you are looking for a good free tier option, you can look at Oracle Cloud that has 10 terabytes of outgoing traffic included. WireGuard uses UDP protocol to communicate. We need to open GCP Firewall to accept VPN traffic on UDP port 60K. This command will allow UDP traffic on port 60K from any IP to any GCP server that has my server network tag. If you have a static IP, you could limit the source range to that IP, but then you won't be able to use the VPN while on the move. As for the 60K port, it can be any port. I just picked 60K as that's the port we'll set up WireGuard to listen on. Next step is to set up a GCP VM. Here, we are setting a free tier micro VM in Iowa and assigning a My Server Network tag so that our firewall rule for incoming traffic will be applied to it. Let me log into the VM. First thing we need to do is to install WireGuard with apt install command. Next, we need to enable packet forwarding so that our Linux VM can pass packets between VPN network and public network. By default, packet forwarding is disabled. Let's do this by editing sysctl configuration file, uncommenting IP forward line and reloading the configuration. Now let's move to WireGuard configuration. First thing we need to do is to generate a key pair for the server and the client. It's similar to what you do for SSH. On the server, I'll go to etc WireGuard folder and generate a private key with wg gank command. By default, it prints the key on the screen, so let's redirect the key to a file. This key should be kept secret and not shared with anyone. Let's derive our public key from the private key with wg pubkey command. Again, it will display the key on the screen. In order to save it to a file, let's redirect the output. We have a key pair for the server. Uh, while I'm at it, let me generate the keys for the client. Now, let's focus on configuring WireGuard. It can be done with wg command plus some IP commands or with wg quick script that will execute those commands for us. Of course, let's go with the easier option. I'm creating a wg0 configuration file on the server. We have two sections. The interface section refers to our local part of the tunnel. Here we put the IP address that will be assigned to the wg0 interface, 
UDP port that our WireGuard will listen on and the server private key. Let's set up the client part at the same time. We'll use dot .2 as the local VPN address for the client, 60k as the listening port and put the client's private key. We are halfway there. Going back to the server configuration file, we have to define our clients. It's done in the peer section. We need to put our client public key and its VPN IP. You can define multiple peers just by adding another peer section for every client. Please mind that I'm not specifying a client public IP address. With this approach, it will be always the client that needs to initiate the connection to the server. Clients can connect from any IP and server will figure out who is sending the data by using the key. Moreover, it allows for IP roaming. Your source IP will change and the VPN will keep working. Let's now switch to the client and add peer section pointing to the server. In the public key field, we'll enter the server's public key. In the allowed IP field, we'll enter server's VPN IP and in the endpoint field, we'll enter server's public IP and port. I will grab it with gcloud command. All is set. Let's try to bring our tunnel up. It's done by running wg quick script with app parameter and the interface name. First on the server side. Please mind that the interface name needs to match with the config file name that you've created. The wg quick script executed IP link add to add a new interface of type WireGuard. wgsetconf configures the WireGuard interface, IP address assigns the IP address, and IP link brings the interface up and sets appropriate MTU. Let's check if the interface is there with IP and wg commands. Let's switch to the client and bring the tunnel up. Let's try picking the server tunnel IP. We can see tunnel stats by just typing wg command. It shows the client public key and listening port, server public key and public IP, and port, and also how much data was sent and received, and when was the most recent activity. Please mind that by default, WireGuard is not a chatty protocol and will not send traffic unless needed. Okay. We have a point-to-point -point connection to our server, but how to route all the traffic over the tunnel? WG Quick script comes to the rescue. Let's stop the client with WG Quick down command and edit the configuration file. In the allowed IP, we'll add four zeros to indicate we want to push all traffic via the tunnel and bring the tunnel up. See what happened. Apart from setting up the interface, WireGuard did also execute few interesting commands, starting with fwmark that will tag all tunnel traffic with 51820 tag. Next, it creates a routing table 51820 and adds the default route via WG interface. In other words, anything that reaches 51820 routing table will be sent via WG0 interface. In Linux, you can have multiple routing tables and define certain rules which routing table to use. We have a rule that checks for 51820 tag on the packet. If the tag is not there, then go to 51820 routing table that sends the packet via WG0 interface. On WG0, packet is encapsulated into a WireGuard envelope tagged with FW mark and destination IP is set to the public IP of the server. New packet traverses the rule engine again. It hits the local routing table, then main routing table, but due to suppress prefix length zero, it goes to the next rule where it's checked for missing 5820 tag. However, the packet has been tagged already, so this rule does not apply and the packet goes to the next rule that sends it out to the default gateway where it reaches the server. Thanks to this setup, all traffic that should go to the default gateway and is not encrypted will be sent to WG0 interface where it will be encrypted 
tucked and sent to the final destination. Now, let's ping 1111. It does not work. Let's trace to that IP. First, hope is good. We go to the server, but then we get a timeout. Why is that? We did enable packet forwarding on the server. Last thing we need to do is to perform source NAT on the server, just like we do on regular routers. Let's try pinging the server again. Works. IP tables NAT command can be added to our config on the server so that it will be executed every time WireGuard is started and removed once it's stopped. Let's do this by adding them to WG configuration file. Now, when we stop the VPN on the server, as you can see, NAT was removed. Let's bring the VPN up. NAT was added. Last thing to do is enable WireGuard service to start at boot. Now, you are all set. It took a while to explain what's going on behind the scenes, but configuration process is very easy. It requires generating and exchanging keys, six lines of configuration and few commands to run. WireGuard is an amazing tool. Next time I will show you more advanced setup on how to create side-to-side -side VPN to mesh three remote locations together.